Alrighty, so while the NFL Draft is going on right now, I am going to do a quick News of the Week episode. And this first news that I'm going to talk about literally happened the day after I did the News of the Week episode. I mean, yeah, I guess this is just one of those times that sometimes it does happen where the news cycle decided to, to announce a blockbuster move right after when I did the News of the Week episode. And I, I could also easily might have just made an individual video talk about how Colorado has acquired Jersey's artists from the Columbus crew, but I decided to kind of wait a little bit because, well, it was kind of a blockbuster move. I think it's a move that everybody knew it was coming. I mean, you know, Jersey's artist with him not getting minutes with the crew and knowing the fact that he still has that ambition of potentially making the World Cup squad this year for the U.S. men's national team, you knew he had to go somewhere else. And the perfect place to for him to go really is for the Colorado Rapids, who, you know, they've been desperate in terms of finding a, a striker and that, you know, I know this season Diego Rubio has tried his best to be that, that number nine and at times he has done well in terms of that spot but there's also times where he has missed so many chances and that, you know, the Rapids still don't have that, that lethal number nine that, that could really take them to the next level. Now, is getting Jarzy Zardes potentially the answer? Maybe. I think, you know, Zardes, I think he is going to be very motivated. And especially, you know, I've always talked about the old cliche of a striker going to a new team to have a change of scenery. And we saw a great example of it when Zardes decided to leave the Galaxy to join the Columbus crew. And literally in the first year, uh, Zardes made a huge impact for the, the Columbus crew. And that, you know, now it seems like it's going to be the same case too because you know his time with the crew really kind of dwindle and especially Caleb Porter really kind of sound off after Zardes basically left for the Rapids and kind of criticized Zardes on the way out which you know I think that's pretty much a say Caleb Porter moment there um yeah you know I think this is going to be a good move for the Rapids it's not going to be a cheap price though I mean you know I know the original agreement is 300,000 gam which doesn't sound like it's a lot but it can go up to 1.1 million dollar in terms of game so yeah i mean overall this move should should benefit both parties here and that you know the crew they get a huge amount of game getting rid of a guy that you knew that he he was pretty much no longer being used for for their team and also the rapids desperately now needed a striker finally got the the player that hopefully will really change their luck going for in that number nine position now, moving on in terms of the next news, is that the Vancouver Whitecaps have officially acquired Andres Kubas from Memes. And, you know, I talked about this in the last News of the Week episode, and this is just kind of me talking about it again, being that this is official and that uh, the Whitecaps not only have signed him, but they also made him the third designated player of their team. And I think overall it's, it's a decent sign. I, mean, I did talk about in last week's News of the Week episode, you know, that they, they do lack that player in the defensive midfielder that you know needs need to need a, a player in that position to to really get get this team going again and that yeah I think getting him will will be a decent price. I've heard some good thing about him. Uh and the price that they paid him isn't really that steep I mean only three million dollars that they have to to sh to basically get him and that that even that is the case. They of course had to to make him as a DP player, and you know, for the Whitecaps, even though they are now have no more DP spot, they technically have one more with the way that you know they're still figuring out the situation with, with what they're gonna do with Lucas Cavallini, and especially now that Cavallini is back to to being being on bench duty after Brian White basically is now come back from from his injuries that he suffered or the injury that kind of kept him out for the first couple of games. You know that's gonna it's gonna be interesting to see that uh, I expect Cavallini is gonna be offload for this Whitecaps team and that will open another D DP spot even though they're pretty much locked in all all three DP spot fill as the time being. Now uh, RSL they have decided that they are going to sign Anderson Julio on a permanent deal from Atlético San Luis. Now I heard there was report that this could also be a DP signing, which if that's the case, I don't think this is a good. Good, good move for RSL to make Anderson Julio a DP consider. He's more of uh, a guy that comes off the bench and re really a guy, guy that is probably one of the be best super sub in the league with him coming off the bench, bringing that energy and bringing that that pace that we, we saw saw last season, especially during the, 
the miraculous Western Conference final run that RSL had in the playoffs. And there's no doubt that RSL really, really like like what he's what they see from him, and they decide to make him on a permanent deal. But again, you know, we'll, we'll see see the the full detail of whether or not if this is just going to be a tech Tam kind of contract he's on, or is he going to be on a DP contract? And like I said, if it's going to be on a DP contract, it's not going to be re really that good for for RSL because you know I I mentioned a lot of thing about about the cardinal sins of a DP and one of the cardinal sins that I, think I haven't mentioned is that you never sign your your DP player to be a a super sub or be a a bench kind of impact player and. And again, we'll, we'll see see whether this is just going to be a TAM deal or is it going to be just a DP deal. Now, uh, RSL, uh, they also are reported to be in advanced talk to bring Jefferson Savarino back to RSL. And there's no doubt this does, does happen. This is a huge move for RSL because I remember when Jefferson Savarino was with this RSL team, he brings so much dynamic to this RSL attack. And I kind of never understand why they, they got rid of him in, in the first place. And now it seems like... They're most likely going to try to bring him back. Although, you know, the fees that they're going to have to pay to Elko Monero, which is where Jefferson Savarino is, is not cheap. But, again, you know, knowing the the fact that they, they also need, need some oomph in the, the attack, consider, you know, in the last couple of games, they kind of do do miss that with them. Haven't been able to score a goal in back-to-back -back games. And it seems like now we're starting to see the RSL that, you know, early in the season, we, we know they got all to such a surprising things start but you knew that that was not going to be sustainable and that they're going to come back down to earth and yeah they have definitely come back down to earth and really started to become the team that i i thought that they were which is a team that is still in a working progress with a new owner and still trying trying to 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 have the owners to kind of look at this team and see what's the vision of this this team to try to get themselves back to a playoff contention now speaking of dp contract that i mentioned earlier with with rs Cell and Anderson Julio. Well, it seemed like Nashville SC is going to lock Walker Zimmerman to a DP contract. Now, again, I know I've said before that signing a center back as your designated player is one of the car notes sin of of handing a DP contract. But in this case, I think thing you can you can kind of ignore that rule a little bit or, or or ignore that unwritten rule with with how MLS teams should sign their DP. Player depending on position because Walker Zimmerman is hands down the best defender in this league. Like he is a, a guy that that there's no no doubt why he is going to be be definitely going to be on that plane to, to Qatar in November and it's going to be be a guy that I think if he does have have a great World Cup there could be a case where Nashville can make some big bucks out of him because you know I know Walker Zimmerman is started now in his prime and he might be. A player that you know when you're in your prime in, in MLS usually we don't see those players make make the jump to Europe around that time usually it's kind of like when the players started to hit their prime that's when they of course make the jump to Europe but there is a case that Walker Zimmerman could, could do so and even if he is going to do so you knew Nashville had to lock him him up and I think the only way to lock up a player that is literally the best defender of the league is on a DP contract so yeah well deserved for for Nashville, or well deserved for Walker Zimmerman to receive that contract, but it's also so so something that you know LAFC. Remember how they traded Walker Zimmerman for 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 about a million dollar gam? Yeah, that move. Yeah. Now now every time I think I mention about Walker Zimmerman of how he's the defender of the year, I'm pretty sure LAFC fans are just shaking their heads and like, oh great, looks like now we're going to have to remember how how we we decided to to make. Make a move to to Nashville by getting rid of one one of the best defender in the league, and now it seems like it's it's come back to 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 hurt us e even more as the as Zimmerman has really be become become um, a start defender in this league. Now, uh, moving on in terms of the next news is that Christian Espinosa, of course, win winning player of the week, unsurprising because anytime when you score a hat trick, and even if the hat trick that Espinosa scored it wasn't really the 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 best hat trick you ever see in 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 the world you know it is still a hat trick and usually when you're the only player that score a hat trick you're gonna win the player of the week now the bad news for the quakes is that in the next game they will not have their best center back nathan for a serious foul foul play that they they, they that he committed in that game against the sounders against 
NYCFC, and we all know what that serious foul play is. It's that challenge that he put on on Rui Diaz, and that, as I said before in that, that review, I thought that should have been a red car, and I thought the Quakes were very lucky to not play down the 10 men for the last 80 minutes of that one. I mean, you can clearly see that that was a studs-up challenge that Nathan basically put on on Rui Diaz, and I was kind of surprised that even when the referee got a VAR to check to see whether or not if that that is a, a red car and that I was shocked the fact that they, they, they decided to not overturn it. Now, at that point, you know, it kind of benefit the, the Quakes a little bit that they didn't went down to 10 men because there was no doubt that, you know, that, that miraculous comeback that the Quakes had. Probably that won't happen if they were, were down to, to 10 men, though. That being said, I shouldn't say that because, you know, you know the Sounders were up 3-1 in in that game and that if the Quakes would have down to 10 men, you know about this season with, with teams being up 3-1 in the latter part of the game and have a man advantage, it does not fa favor them. And we know the Quakes have already done done that a miraculous comeback despite down a man uh, earlier this season against the crew. But again, I, I, I even with, with all that, I didn't, I, I don't think the Quakes would have come back in that one. So they vote that, you know, he... He did not get get sent off in that game, but I also thought that yeah, this the, the disappearing committee is going to come back and probably suspend him for the next game, and that is exactly is the case. And that yeah, I mean the Quakes, you know, their task of potentially getting something out of against NYCFC is now just even more more tougher. Though again, not that I, I give them any shots uh, of getting anything out out of the game against NYCFC. Consider NYCFC in the last two games have been the the most most f furious attack out of in the entire league and that I'm just hoping the Quakes don't give up like five goals in that in that that weekend game against NYCFC coming up this weekend but now moving on in terms of the next news and talk about news that is not related to player signings and also contract extension or even talk about the discipline committee ha handing fines and stuff it is a big news that you know is this news is actually so big that you know when I look on the MLS Reddit page, they actually had a thread that dedicated to 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 Inter Miami and specifically the the Miami commissioner ca kind of decided to have a, a meeting and then have a vote of whether or not indeed if if the Inter Miami Freedom Park site is is going to go ahead. And after just such a long long meeting, that in some way I kind of wait. For this news of the week episode to do a little bit later and wait for the meeting to be all over because then then i can kind of talk about exactly whether or not not if this this vote would go ahead and that in the end it seems like the the, the stadium plan that beckham has had with the inter miami free and park side will indeed go ahead uh the vote was 4-1 in in fa favor of them approving the inter miami freedom park side and that yeah, these last couple of months, and really maybe these last couple of years of this this ongoing talks of whether or, or not if Inter Miami is going to have have that the the Freedom Park site is now now over, and that yeah we can now now certainly we can now look forward, and at least for Inter Miami fans, they can definitely look forward to see when exactly they are going going to start the next process, which is. When the stadium is going to build, I mean, they already have the render of the stadium, but now they can start the the timeline in terms of when are they going to start construction and when the stadium is going to finish. And in some way, I'm happy for for Inter Miami fans and certainly for the organization that for once they actually actually able to get get things done because I know the butts of of Inter Miami jokes has always been with them always caught in in political kind of kind of hot potato and in this situation it would be just so full in Miami if they didn't get this Freedom Park site but thankfully it seems like like the Miami Commission does approve, approve this and that yeah seems like that stadium is going to to go through and like I said you know it's gonna be interesting to see the next process of when exactly the constructions of that stadium will begin and when that stadium is going to finish now speaking uh, of stadium got some good news also heading up north of the border and specifically in Montreal where the Big O look like they will get a synthetic turf which will meet not only FIFA quality but also FIFA quality pro standard which is the highest standard that FIFA basically award in terms of the the pitch at a stadium and this is definitely great news for Montreal because you know I, I talked about both 
for how the Big O not only is a stadium that kind of live up to, to its name, but also the fact that the turf at that stadium is regarded as the wor worst in MLS. Like, you know it's bad when, when Montreal players have openly they talk about how they do not want to play games at that stadium because of how bad the turf is and that at times it can re really be, be, be a very ri risky he kind of kind of venture with the way way how tough that turf is well hopefully with this synthetic turf that is being laid it will definitely help help that problem and also i think they're they're getting this synthetic turf ready because they know that uh actually i think montreal is still still going to be hosting some world cup game in 2026 i mean it's getting to a point where i know in canada there's been been just so much that's going on with which city is going to host the World Cup. I mean, originally there was going to be four cities that was going to host the World Cup, and now it seems like we're down to two. And now there's rumor that we could be back to three because Vancouver looked like they they reconsider the their original decision of not hosting World Cup game. But yeah, this is definitely great great news for Montreal, and especially at the big big old that you know, you know they I know that they have some big plan in terms of renovating the place, including once again. Re replacing the roof but this is definitely a good good start for a stadium that has been been a big big problem room for montreal they had to deal with since the inception when they built it back in the 70s now uh moving on in terms of the next news we got some news coming out of the team that's going to be coming into the league next season that is st louis sc as they have announced the inaugural season ticket prices for for their fans heading not only for their inaugural season but also, they have decided to create a very interesting thing, kind of plan where they actually are are giving some some discounts if their their season ticket holder is going to be committing to a free year year plan uh, to to buy the, the these tickets and ha have a much cheaper rate than they of course just buy buy one season and that's kind of interesting because I've never seen an MLS team decided to do that and in some way it's kind of smart to do do that too because you know you are able to to not only they get the fans to to basically pay for the cheap cheaper price but also you're basically making revenue throughout those free year time because you know the, these fans are going to be now committed to the free year plan and if they decide to cancel it you still get 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 the the, the money out of that so that kind of makes sense in terms of revenue and also so in terms of trying to to to, to kind of help help increase fa fan interest of buying season ticket which i know the fan interest of buying season ticket in that that market is really really strong right now i mean that's always kind of the case whenever there's a new team coming in mls but in terms of the ticket price itself i mean when i look at the tickets price yeah it's definitely not cheap i mean it's not really at the level of charlotte fc where when they announce that ticket prices of how, how expensive it is but it's not at a level where where we saw what FC Cincinnati decided to do with announcing their season ticket it prices for their inaugural year, or even when they decided to move to TKL Stadium. But again, I guess that I'll give them the pass with the way that they are an expansion team. And anytime when you're an expansion team and you're actually playing in in a a brand new stadium that will be be open uh, by the time you you start our life in MLS which that has not happened for a long time I mean you look at these past couple of expansion team and they usually have to play like their first two year at a multi-purpose venue where they have to go through a long road trip to, to start the season before their brand new new stadium is open so it's great to see that St. Louis is actually go going to to be start playing their home game right off off the bat and don't have to deal with that but also you know already looking at some of the the rendering of that stadium and yeah i think it's probably worth the price for these fans to to pay even if it's going to be on the high scale point now uh moving on in terms of the next news is that there is actually a report suggesting that Mateus almeida is reported to be the next head coach of aek athens now i say those report lightly because i don't think that's true and i will be shocked if almeida do, do decided to go to greece to to coach AEK Athens. I mean, AEK Athens is a well-known known na name in the Greek Super League, but this just does not make sense, knowing the fact that it was pretty clear that Almeida wants to stay, stay either in in the CONCACAF Con region or maybe go down to South America to coach coach a couple of, or coach a national team as there's been interest down in South America, a couple of countries that's interest to bring in Almeida as their national team head coach. But 
yeah, I, I would be shocked that if he does decide to go to Europe, I think Almeida, most likely, you know, there's well been that, that huge rumor of him going back to Chivas and that, you know, that still doesn't seem like it has moved, moved forward even though there's a lot of people, including a lot of Liga MX fans, know that Almeida eventually is going to go back to Chivas, but Again, it's kind of weird that, that once in a time we do hear, hear these kind of crazy the rumors of him going to Europe. And like I said, I don't think this is going to happen. I'll be shocked if this does ha happen. But now moving on into the last news of this news of the week is the U.S. men's national team. They're going to be set to play a, a another friendly in June. After I mentioned in the last news of the week episode, they're going to be playing against Morocco. And I believe that game is going to be at TQL Stadium. Uh, in Cincinnati, but this game of course will will be taking place at Children's Mercy Park in Kansas City And they're gonna be playing against Uruguay on June 5th And I think this is definitely a a, a friendly that will will test the US more than let's say they play against Morocco Because only the fact that Uruguay is gonna be going to the World Cup, but Uruguay has always been been a, a nation that is That is, is definitely not only an overachiever in in the 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 world, world of soccer, but also that they're a team that that can definitely create a a a, a real competition for the U.S. to prepare for the World Cup in in Qatar in later this year. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you like, smash the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of these news, and if there's any news I didn't mention here on the board, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you like, smash the subscribe button, and yeah, I of course will see you guys next time.